Keith Beatty never got sick. 70 years of work, minimum 10 hours a day, and he never got sick. Never took a day off. How'd that happen? He started off with $25, that's all. He was pumping gas in the station at Alma and Forth. He had just gotten the job right after being discharged from the RCAF. A friend came in for gas. You're not gonna do this all your life, are you? His friend said he needed someone to help him make toys for Woodward's Christmas display. Keith Beatty, needing the job, walked into the gas station office and quit. Keep the money you owe me, he said. He was going off on his own. Well, sort of on his own. Off with a friend who had a six-inch table saw and a four-inch joiner. But what more do you need to start a fortune? You use what you have, a six-inch table saw and a four-inch joiner. At 19, he got a piece of discarded wood from Hammond Furniture. Beautiful wood that had been ruined in the factory. He made a cabinet out of it. He and his friend got more walnut plywood from Wally Hammond who said he would let him use his credit at A.R. Williams to procure proper machines if he could lease or build a proper shop. No credentials, no bank account. People were different then, Keith said. They cared. Keith and his friend found a vacant lot in Marpole for $190 and built a shop. They did all the work themselves, foundation, concrete, block walls, plumbing, wiring, and roofing for a 1,200 square foot building. For two months, they worked from morning till dark. Through the winters, he worked by streetlight. For a guy who works so hard and is so generous, it breaks his heart when he sees people begging on the street now. He gives and gives. His foundation gave $1,350,000 to Burnaby General toward the cost of a new MRI. He met Charlie Metcalf, who was a fireman, and said he would put a roof on a house. It was his first roof, but Keith did not know this. The roof was so good that Charlie and Keith framed a number of houses for a contractor. By 1952, he was so busy framing houses and gathering wood and getting orders, he said he did not have enough time to frame and haul supplies. He put down his tools and never went back. He became a general contractor. I was scared, he said. The Central Park Garden Village came along, 360 lots. Keith bought every corner lot and took $10 deposits and could not write the contracts fast enough. I learned property counted for something, he said. In truth, it counted for almost everything. Then the market went flat and he sold 15 houses in Surrey at a loss for $7,500 with nothing down, just to keep the cost of taxes, heat, light, and insurance off the books. In 1960, Keith decided to build projects where he could retain ownership effectively becoming a developer as well as the contractor. This was the fundamental shift that formed the foundation that the company is today, a vertically integrated developer. But bad things happen, they always do. His accountant forged checks and he and his wife split up. Bankrupt and divorced and a single father. Tough. But good things happen too. He met another woman, Betty, and almost 50 years later, they are still in love. The business grew through the 60s and 70s. Keith even built the PNE prize homes for five years from 1960 to 64. The buildings got bigger and there were more of them to build. In the mid 1980s, the company began to focus on developing large industrial parks rather than relying on one-off projects. This move into land development completed the full vertical integration. In 1992, after completing his MBA, Keith's youngest son, Ryan, joined the company and quickly took responsibility for land acquisitions and worked alongside older brother, Colin, on all development projects. At the time, the company owned and managed two million square feet. Brother Colin left the business in 1999 after more than 20 years with the company. Ryan became president in 2001. Since Ryan joined the company, it has constructed more than 13 million square feet and now owns and manages in excess of 8 million square feet along with hundreds of acres of land for development. The company is the largest landlord of industrial space in BC. 2009 was the best year in the history of the company with development and leasing of 420,000 square feet for Home Depot, 
460,000 square feet for brewers distributors, 350,000 square feet for overweighty. They currently have development projects underway in Burnaby, Coquitlam, Delta, Langley, Surrey, and Vancouver. The firm is recognized as the brand name for industrial development in BC. The company is now expanding into residential with the 82-acre mixed-use Fraser Mills project in Coquitlam that will one day be home to over 7,000 people. The award goes to Ryan Beatty, the Beatty Crew. In 2009, Ryan was the recipient of the Ernst & Young Pacific Region Entrepreneur of the Year Award. I have a father who's such an amazing entrepreneur himself. We're so lucky to be able to work together like this. One day it won't be the same and I'll always cherish this. His father did not finish grade 11. Too dumb, he said. Or maybe too smart. How did Keith do all this? Simple. He wanted to. He has had amazing employees along the way. At BD, they are often measured in decades, not years. About his buildings, he just did them, sometimes finishing while the plans were still being drawn and before the permits were ready. Other large companies could get hung up on process. Keith just did it. <laughs>